Hello, good people. Today, we are going to discuss public sector accounting and finance. My name is Richard Abedu EJ. Specifically, we are going to touch on conceptual framework. Conceptual framework. That is one key area that is mostly or almost all the time examined in the public sector accounting and finance paper of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana examination. So now, just to give you an, a brief introduction on what the, the conceptual framework is. It is important to note that every public sector accountant is guided by a certain standard in the preparation and presentation of financial statements. And specifically, that is what the, the standard that is the International Public Sector Accounting Standard. That is the IFSAS. Is it okay? We also have what we call the RPG. So the IFSAS guides in the preparation of what? Financial statement. Whereas the RPG guides in the preparation of what? Non-financial statements. Is it okay? So note that as public sector accounting or professional or public sector accountants, once you are preparing and presenting financial statement, you are guided by a standard, specifically that is the IFSAS or the RPG. And then the conceptual framework comes in because it underpins the pub, uh, general purpose financial statements. Okay, it's, it provides certain concepts that underpin the general purpose financial statements. And the board, the IFSAS board, uh, the International Public sector accounting standard board that is the board or or a sub committee of the ifac okay they issue standards for public sector accountants so the board are guided by the concepts that are spelled in the conceptual framework okay to issue the ifsas or the rpg is it okay so it is important to note that the ifsas board are guided by the 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 concept the concepts in the conceptual framework to develop the IFSAS and the RPG. Is it okay? So let's let's note that professional accountants in the operation of accounts or financial statement in the public sector will be guided by the IFSAS or the RPG, and uh, the board in the course of developing the IFSAS or the RPG. Which is the recommended practice guide they are guided by certain concepts con concepts spelled out in what the conceptual framework so there are actually eight eight chapters in the conceptual framework which is expected uh, or which is required to be to be understood before examination so this chapter or this section we are going to look at four chapters of the the conceptual framework Specifically, chapter one, which is what rule and authority of the conceptual framework. Then, chapter two is the objective and uses of general post financial reports. Chapter three, we'll look at what qualitative characteristics and the constraints of information in the financial statement. Then, we look at the, cha uh, the chapter four, which is reporting entities. Reporting entities. So, let's look at the rule first. So what is the role? The role is part of how we introduce the, the conceptual framework. So we say that the role of the conceptual framework, what? It establishes concepts that underpin the general reports financial report adopted by public sector entities that adopt a core basis of accounting. So let's take note that the conceptual framework establishes concepts that underpins or underlines general post financial reports by public sector account uh, entities that adopt a core basis of what accounting. And we go ahead to say that the the IFSAS board the IFSAS board uses the concept okay uh, to to develop the IFSAS or the RPG. So the concepts that are in the conceptual framework are used or, or guide the, the IFSAS board 
in the development and issuance of what ASAS and the recommended practice guide. So let's go ahead to talk about the authority of the conceptual framework. What is the authority? So we mentioned earlier that accountants, when you are preparing your financial statement, uh, the authority or you are guided by what? The a standard, which is the ESAS or the RPG. So we say that the conceptual framework does not establish any authority. So we say it does not establish authoritative requirements. It doesn't have any authority, okay, over uh, in the operation of accounts. So specifically, we say it does not establish authoritative requirements, nor does it override the EFSAS or the RPG. So it's important to, to state or to know that the conceptual framework does not establish authoritative requirements, nor does it override the EFSAS or the RPG. However, however, please kindly take note of, 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 of this aspect that in the event where there are issues in the preparation of financial statements that are not dealt in any of the ESAS or the RPG, okay, you, uh, the, the conceptual framework will serve as a guide. So the professional accountant will refer to the conceptual framework, okay, issues like definitions, uh, recognitions, measurement, presentations, disclosure, Okay, once, once they are not dealt in any uh, ESAS, the, the conceptual framework becomes a guide for, for that issue to be dealt. So specifically, that is what the, the rule and authority of the conceptual framework. Let's move to the second chapter, which is the objective and users. Objective and users of general post financial statement. So the objective, let's touch on the objective first. So the objective of the general report's financial statement is to provide information about a public sector entity, which will be very useful for decision-making purpose and that of what? For accountability purpose. So whatever information that is provided in the general report's financial statement or financial reports, okay, provides information about the entity Okay, and that information helps users to make decision and for accountability purpose as well. Let's quickly move to the, the users of the general purpose financial statement. There are two main users of the general purpose financial statement. That is the primary users and the other users. So let we'll pick each one of them and, and, and look at who are they. So the primary users, who are the primary users? There is one question that is mostly examined in uh, the ICAG exams. That is the primary users of the general purpose financial statement. So the primary users are resource providers and their representatives, and also the service recipients and their representatives. So let's take note of that. The primary users are users of the financial statement who are uh, categorized as resource providers and their reps, their representatives, and that of what service recipients and their reps. So we say that those who provide resources, those who provide the monies, okay, to be used, and those who receive the services that are being rendered or provided, okay, and their representatives, they are the primary users. So examples are the taxpayers one, then the citizen is also another example. We can talk about lenders, donors. Then the last one is what representatives or the reps so the reps specifically is the legislature so we mentioned legislature to be part of what the primary users because they represent the interest of what of the primary users that is maybe the the citizens is it okay now let's talk about the other users we can mention a couple of them like uh, government statisticians there are other users of the financial statement we can also mention a financial analyst we can mention the media is also an example of the other users we can talk about researchers we can talk about lobby groups they all use the financial statement they fall under the other users category all right so now let's quickly move to the chapter three the chapter three talks about the qualitative characteristics okay what is qualitative characteristics basically 
every financial statement is very useful. Every financial statement should actually provide certain attributes, okay, that will make the financial statement useful. So, example, a financial statement should not delay to lose its usefulness. Is it okay? So, once it delays and it loses its usefulness, we say that it lacks an aspect or a certain qualitative characteristics. So, in general, we say qualitative characteristics are the attributes that makes the financial statement useful, okay, to users. So, there are six of them. We're going to talk about the relevance, faithful representation, timeliness, comparability, understandability, and verifiability. We'll pick each one of them and discuss as we go by. So the first one is the relevance. So we say an information or a financial statement is very relevant because it influences the decision of users. So to talk about the relevance of the financial statement, we'll touch on two things. That is the predict, uh, predictive value and the confirmatory value. So we say predictive, uh, predictive value because the, the information should be able to pre predict what is events of the future. The confirmatory value also subscribe to the fact that uh, the, the information should be able to confirm current events or historical events. Now let's quickly move to the second aspect which is what? Faithful representation. We say that the information in the financial statement should represent what it purports to be okay what it purports to represent so whatever that has been stated in the financial information should actually reflect the true aspect of the entity okay so in touching there are three aspects three components that should be looked at that is the fact that the information should be complete it should be neutral and it should be free from material error Okay, now let's move to the second, the third aspect, that is comparability. We say that comparability information in a financial statement should be able to be, uh, should the user should be able to compare, okay, the the similarities or the differences in different sets of what phenomena. Is it okay? So when you have one financial statement for a year, it should be able to be compared to the another year, okay. Now, financial statement of an entity, okay, we should be able to compare that to another entity's financial uh, statement, and we should be able to compare the financial statement of an entity to that of what the industry. So, once we are able to do that, we talk about what comparability. Comparability. Let's look at understandability, which is also uh, qualitative characteristics of the financial statement. We say understandability, the user should be able to comprehend the information in the financial statements. Timeliness, timeliness, users, uh, uh, the financial uh, information or the financial statement should be available to users before it loses its usefulness. Then we'll be talking about what? Timeliness. Then the last one, verifiability. Verifiability is the only qualitative characteristics that ensures that ensures uh, another qualitative characteristic. So we say that verifiability ensures faithful representation. Faithful representation. Because when we say that the economic value of the entity should represent what it purports to be, okay, how can we uh, 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 confirm that it's faithfully represented? It's through the last qualitative characteristics we are describing, which is what? Uh, verifiability you would have to verify to ensure that the financial information in the statement is what faithfully represented okay so specifically there are six relevant faithful representation comparability uh, understandability timeliness and timeliness and faithful uh, timeliness and verifiability so Away from the qualitative characteristics, I would also touch on the, the constraint of information in the financial statement. We'll talk about three constraints. That is what the cost benefits, which is one constraint. The second one is materiality, which is also another constraint. Then the third one, we'll talk about balance among the qualitative characteristics. So materiality, let's pick on materiality, which is the first one. 
You say an information is material if its omission or misstatement can influence the decision of what users. Okay, so you bear with me that an information that is material to one uh, entity may not be material to another en entity. So we say that materiality is based on what judgment. It is subjective. Materiality is subjective. So because of its subjective nature and it's because it's based on uh, judgment, we say it's what it's a constraint of information in the financial statement. Now let's move to the second constraint, which is cost benefit. Cost benefit. So we say the preparation of financial statement counts with cost. Therefore, there should be benefits to justify the cost in the preparation. Okay. But we also, to understand, we can also say that the benefit of financial information in financial statement may be subjective because an information or a financial statement that is beneficial to one entity may not be beneficial to another entity. So it is subjective. It's based on judgment. So because of its subjective nature, because of its judgment, we say that it's what? It's a constraint. Now, the last aspect, which is the balance among the qualitative characteristics, we say that.